Welcome back to the STEM project, the Students Taking On Environmental Matters Project. I'm Krista Hodges with the Dan River Basin Association, and we're doing this project in partnership with the Pennsylvania County STEM Academy. And this grant was made possible through the Virginia Environmental Endowment. So we're starting back with the seventh grade school year. We are so excited to have you guys here and being a part of this project again. This will be your second year joining the project. And this year, you all are going to take action. You are going to be citizen scientists as you complete a litter cleanup and collect data for us to use for now as baseline data for now and for in the future to have something to be able to compare it to. In addition to that, you'll be doing macro invertebrates. You'll be learning about stream aquatic insects, and you'll be completing some kits throughout the school year that will build upon your learning experience. And then in the spring, you'll create a cumulative project that you'll be able to share with the sixth grade students, um, sharing just pretty much everything that you've learned over the last two years. So we're excited to get this school year going, and First of all, I want to talk to you a little bit about the litter cleanup and how you all are going to be citizen scientists through this project. So you all, like I said, you're going to do a litter cleanup. Originally in the original grant, you were supposed to go out to the Dan River and complete the cleanup along the Dan River where we have been doing the water quality testing over the last year. However, you know, with the field trip situation, we weren't able to do that this year. So we decided that you all would complete uh, litter cleanups on your school campuses. So as you all learned over the last year, protecting our water resources is very important. The quality of our water is not only important to us, but also to the wildlife that lives in the rivers and streams. So as you learn about the macroinvertebrates, you'll see that some of them are very susceptible to the effects of pollution in their environment. Others are tolerant of pollution. As you identify them, you will learn more about them and what they can and can't handle. And you'll see that they can tell a story of the stream over what happens over a matter of a few months or even in short term period as well. So let's talk a little bit about the litter cleanup. <clears throat> As you guys take action as citizen scientists, you'll go, you have a data sheet that you will be using to record your data. So what you'll be doing is um, looking at the type of litter that you collect and you will be um, tallying how much you collect and what type of litter it is. So one of the, some of the things that I want you guys to know about as you collect your data for the litter cleanup is why this method of collecting data is important. Why being a citizen scientist is important. So first of all, data collection gives us a baseline. If we have a baseline, then we know what else we can use to compare that information to. Second, it allows us to find hot spots. If there are hot spots of certain types of litter in certain areas, it allows us to know what is there and where it is located. Eventually, if we wanted to make a map of where certain types of litter are located, it would be helpful to all of us to have this baseline of information so we can use it. Finally, it engages people to become involved as citizen scientists. So it engages you guys to become involved as citizen scientists. As DARBA, as the Dan River Basin Association, we don't have a whole lot of staff that can just go out and monitor streams or you know pick up this litter so what we do is engage volunteers in being involved with the organization and the way that they can do that is being citizen scientists they can monitor our rivers and streams they can collect water quality information they can go out and pick up a litter and use that litter like i said to create the baseline information to be able to use to compare to other things it also gives us the opportunity to rank problematic litter for example, balloons being released into the environment, we all know that it creates harm to wildlife. It can get around wildlife's necks or they can eat the balloons and they can become very sick when they ingest the balloons. So if it allows us to see where those hot spots or what types of litter are a problem, 
in a certain area, then we can use that information later on. And the way that we can use that is by policy change. So if we see that there is a problem, there's a hot spot of a certain type of litter in a certain area, then we can use that to change policy. An example is the balloons that were being released into the environment. It is now illegal to release balloons into the environment because we know the harm that they cause to the wildlife. And so now, you know, because we have that information, it is now illegal. They just uh, made that uh, illegal this year. So because of all of that information that was collected over the last several years related to balloons and the problems that they cause, we now have a policy that says it's illegal to do that. It's a great thing when it comes to helping wildlife. It comes to bettering our ecosystem, bettering our environment for us and for the others that live here. As you go out and collect your, your data, you're, like I said, you will basically look at what type of litter you collect. So as DARBA, we've done many, many cleanups and one of the biggest types of litter that I see when I do cleanups with students is the number one is usually cigarette butts and then also fast food or convenience food items. So usually like to-go boxes, um, sauce packets, sauce containers, fast food cups, even like, you know, soda bottles or anything like that. It's convenience food that you can take with you on the go, which seems like a good thing, but when people don't dispose of it properly, it becomes a very bad problem. So those are different, and also cigarette butts, I said that those are you know, one of the highest types of pollution that we find in the most um, quantity. Another type of pollution that you'll see most often is usually um, aluminum or, you know, metal, something like that. Usually that's related to, uh, you know, beer cans, also glass, beer bottles, stuff like that. Very bad to be in the environment because glass and metal usually don't break down or they take a very long time to break down. So that's one of the things that I'll ask, are they decomposable? Does it mean do they stay in the environment forever or does it take 200 years for them to break down? Plastic is one of the types of litter that we see in the environment, usually in a large quantity as well. And you'll see on your sheet that you have several different op options for plastic. You have plastic number one and two, plastic three, four, and five, and then you also have micro litter and that includes the teeny tiny plastics that get broken and start to get into little pieces and they get in the environment. But if you know, if you study the oceans, that micro litter is a very bad issue because it gets into organisms' stomachs and they can't break it down. And the same thing happens around here too. We just don't see it as much as we do in the ocean. So another type of litter that we see have seen quite frequently related to the pandemic has been PPE items gloves and masks, a lot of people don't dispose of those properly. So you're seeing those out um, around school campuses, around businesses, around stores, a lot more frequently. And those are definitely becoming a problem. We need to make sure that we're disposing of them where they should go. Another type of litter that you're going to see in the environment is styrofoam. Styrofoam is not something that breaks down. Once it's there, it lasts in the environment forever. So a lot of um, to-go boxes, fast food boxes, they've been in the environment, you know, ever since somebody threw them out their car window and didn't dispose of it properly, and they're going to be there for many, many years, forever probably, before they start to break down. So styrofoam is one of those that does not decompose. And actually a lot of fast food or restaurants now, you'll see some of them are actually starting to make plant-based takeout containers that will actually decompose when they're in the environment. So even if people don't dispose of these items properly and they end up going in the trash and into a landfill, if they decompose is a big deal because once they get into the landfill, if it breaks down, that's great because then it'll go back into the soil. But if it doesn't break down, it's just going to be there forever. So on your cleanup form, you'll also note um, how much, how many pounds of litter that you all collect. Hopefully we'll collect by the time that we're done. See, all of these forms are gonna be turned back in. Hopefully we will collect hundreds of pounds of litter from these school campuses. But, you know, it's just a place for you to record your information so we'll have more data to collect. 
Also, you'll do your cleanup location. This is just in case anyone is able to go out and collect it from a different area, but otherwise you'll just write your school location on the form. And then also an estimated miles cleanup. That's something that we can track now and down the line. You know, this is the number of miles that DARBA has cleaned up in five years, 10 years. It's just really good information to have. So in addition to your litter cleanup, like I said, you'll be learning about macroinvertebrates. Uh, we would love it if you guys used the um, Tub of Bugs video. It's a, a full length educational video that you can learn about macroinvertebrates and aquatic insects in the environment. Mr. Wayne Kirkpatrick is the speaker in that video. It's on our YouTube channel and he is well versed, many years trained in Virginia Save Our Streams water monitoring. And then over the school year you will also be receiving a mini pond ecosystem and a trash can ocean kit. So you will be learning about of course different ways to clean up pollution that gets into the environment and then you'll also be looking at different organisms that live in the ecosystem. Finally, I would like to say that in the spring we would do our luncheon. You guys will get to share, like I mentioned earlier, you'll share your cumulative project early spring with the sixth grade students. And then as a celebration for all of your hard work that we've done over these last two years, we're going to do a luncheon and also going to get a water treatment or a wastewater treatment a guy to come in and maybe even make a video or come to your schools if possible and tell you all about what it takes to treat water once all of this pollution is in the environment what it takes to treat water to get it clean enough for us to be able to drink so i want to thank you guys for your time today and in this project it's been a really great project i'm looking forward to speaking with you all some more over the school year I look forward to the next, um, to the spring when we can do our luncheon. I think this year is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it and I hope to see you all very soon. Thank you. Bye.